Bense here. He is an expert uh, in data warehousing. He will be talking about METL um, package for Python. And will tell us, introduce the package, and tell us uh, his uh, functionality and some of the common use cases uh, for its use. OK, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, and hello. Uh, our topic is Extract Transform Load using METL. Uh, my name is Bence Faludi. And first of all, let me introduce myself and my company. So uh, I'm working in Tmito. This is a first service agency uh, located in Budapest. It was founded in 2008 with two simple objectives, to create clever things and to assemble an amazing team. Uh, we have one. We have more than 100 colleagues right now, and with the most of the variety of the skills they have. So uh, we have multiple divisions like UX department, we have uh, graphic designers, developing part, and a data team. And we have multiple clients as well. For example, we're working for the McDonald's, for Aldi, Vodafone, and multiple different companies. And I'm working in this data division as a senior database manager. And furthermore, I am the organizer of the Budapest Database Meetup in Budapest and the co-organizer of the Budapest Python Meetup in Budapest as well. Uh, so if you're planning to go to uh, Budapest soon, uh, just say hello. It would, be amazing. it would be amazing to meet you all there. And our team is maintaining data warehouses, doing data reporting, uh, data mining, data enrichment. We're doing data visualization as well. And we're de developing CRMs and different BI softwares in Python. So, and because we're working with Python and data, uh, let's start that to first of all take a look about how you can use Python for data. So, Python for data, uh, it is a great ecosystem. Uh, it has a huge amount of libraries available. So, we can do almost anything we want with it. So, uh, this is how the ecosystem looks like. <laughs> This is most of it. So uh, we have data harvesting packages, like Scrapy. We have data cleansing APIs and applications. We have tools for data analysis, like Pandas, NumPy, Numba, and, and furthermore. Uh, and you will definitely hear these tools during this PyData track. And we have some well-known machine learning packages as well, like Scikit-Learn or uh, data reporting li libraries like CCAN or Cubes. And of course, we have several ETLs as well. So let's focus our topic today, the ETLs. So what is the ETL? The extract transform load is means a process. which starts to extract data from outside source, to transform it, and load to the end target. Um, for example, if you want to migrate a database to another, you can use an ATL, or you can use an ATL when you want to convert files or merging files together. So uh, in Python, there are several ETL libraries. And this is the timeline of the first releases of the ETL packages. So the first package was the Brewery tool. It's a really, really great tool for data streaming and auditing. It was uh, released in 2011. And the next one was PETL. It was the first general purpose ETL package for, uh, for ETL purposes. The next one was METL. It's our package today. It's, uh, you can configure it with YUM files, and you can use only minimal programming. The next one was the uh, Bubbles. It has the same author as the Brewery tool, and it's really good for uh, data processing and data measurement. And the next one was RDC ETL. It was the first tool which is able to do really complex jobs with it. And the last tool we have is the Luigi. It was uh, created, uh, it was released last year, and it was created by the Spotify team. And it's able to do data processing jobs. So if you have multiple data, you can batch your jobs and you can do it very cool. Uh, so these are all of the packages we have. But the Brewery tool is not supported anymore. So uh, these are those packages we have right now and which is updated regularly. 
and take a, take a closer look about some of these. So let's start with PETL. <coughs> PETL was the first general purpose ETL package. So uh, it has several functions like uh, it can handle as ETL pipelines, you can code in functional or objective oriented programming style, or you can use it a really interactive way. And it has a really understandable code. So if you see the example, you can see it's quite understandable. You can get a preview of the data, how you use at the moment. And it's really great. And it handles multiple source and target types as well. So you can uh, read a CSV file, or you can use as a source as a database, or you can use, as, for example, a Pandas data frame or a NumPy array as a source, or you can write to these targets as well. And it has multiple built-in transformation as well. So you can manipulate the headers of the files, you can do different joins, and you can duplicate the rows as well. The R package I want to show you is the Luigi. It's a batch data processing tool, and it has a really good flow support. So it handles dependencies. So you can uh, define dependencies after, uh, between eight jobs you have. And it has a built-in Hadoop integration, a data flow visualization, and a command line integration. And you can use it with objective oriented programming style. And if you see the example in here as well, you see you need to write classes. You need to define your requirements, the uh, running process, and the output data. And if you have uh, more complex jobs, you can visualize the test status for it. So you can see what's running right now, what's the status of the job. So basically, it's a really good, really good uh, task for, uh, with huge amount of dependencies. So our two tool today is the METL. And we created this tool from scratch based on experience on, on the Kettle and the Brewery tool. And it was funded by the European Union. And we've write it in Python. So it's a full Python package. And it has several different uh, features, but this package is completely different than the previous ones. So uh, what kind of features we have? It has nine source and 11 target types. Uh, we have more than 20 uh, transformations. Uh, it, we don't have a GUI, but uh, we can configure it with YUM format. And we can use Python purely if you want. And uh, we can check differences between migrations. So uh, you can see how many new, how many updated, how many deleted records we have in two different data sets. And we have uh, multiple transformations, as I mentioned before, and this quick and easy to extend. And basically, Metal has two main components. This two main component is the source and the target. The source is, which is retrieve your data, and the target which will write or update your data to the given storage after every transformation are completed. So uh, let's take a closer look about source. So the source is responsible for the followings. Uh, first, you can define the source type. So uh, what kind of files you have. For example, you have a CSV file or you're using a database. Next, you need to define the fields. So what kind of fields you have in your database or on your data file. Because most of the cases, you don't want to read all of your data. You need only just a couple of rows. And the last, you need to define the maps between the data and the columns. So actually, where you find the data in your file. So uh, the type, the source time, is containing the following. So you need to uh, define the type, for example, CSV or database. And you need to define their own settings as well. So for example, if you're using a CSV file, uh, you need to define the delimiter or a quote character, or if you use a database, you need to define the U uh, connection URL and, for example, the uh, table name you want to use, or the statement query you want to use, actually. So um, that's one. When you're defining the fields, you need to define a field to, uh, so you need a unique name and a type for every field. Uh, so you can use the basic Python types, for example, integer, boolean, and so on. And you can define transformations for each field. These transformation could be, for example, to want to uh, convert title case something or want to remove all accent from a file and, and use the homogenize function. 
And the last one was the mapping. So the mapping is a uh, so the mapping is between the data and the fields. And the map is means best to the data most of the cases, and you need to separate it with a per character. So for example, if you have a CSV file which is containing a email domain popularity for several countries, and you're looking for the uh, domain column, uh, the index of this column will be zero. So the map will be, uh, map will be one, and if you're looking for the popularity, it will be two, because it's in the third column. Because we're starting from the counting from zero as well. <clears throat> or if you have a complex format, for example, a JSON file, you need to write uh, not a numeric format of the pass, but the actual pass of the data. So for example, if you're looking for the name of the venue, we need to find it was under the response, it's under the venue, and under the name. And there is the venue's name. And absolutely the same is unread notification count as well. So it's under the notifications, and because there is a list, so we need to use one of them items. So we use the zero item. And after that, we continue the uh, pass to the data. And because Matty is using the DM package for this kind of data mapping, you can use it for more complex things as well. So for example, if you have a complex uh, list with dictionaries in it, you can use some kind of operator. For example, the star operat operator, which will iterate over your data set and collect the information you need. And you can use multiple operator as well. So for example, if you want to collect, in the second example, if you want to collect in a list, in an iterated list over an iterated list elements as well. And you can add some kind of filters as well for some of the records. So uh, this is how the source component uh, workflow looks like. Uh, so first of all, we read the given source file, and line by line, we uh, fill out the data and executing every transformation. And the last one, when everything is done, uh, we finish the, the uh, source step. And this is how an example uh, shows in, in Matil configuration file. So in the left side, you see uh, Matil YAM configuration. You need to define the type. So that's the source. It's a CSV. You need to define a resource. This is your input file. Uh, you can define some settings for the file. For example, the skip row uh, says how many uh, lines you want to skip from the beginning of the file. And the header row is the index of the uh, line which is containing the header. And you need to define the fields as well. And this is the same in Python. And you can read all of the data. And it's cool because uh, if you see this example, much easier to use a CSV package in Python. But if you change the source, you use the same configuration before. So for example, if one time you get a CSV file and next day you will get a JSON file, it will read in every time. And it will work. And the next main component was the target. Target is required for every process and is responsible to write or update your data to the given storage. So this is the end target actually. And to define these same settings as previously we said. So uh, for example, if you want to write, uh, write your data to a database, you need to define the connection URL and the table you want to write your data. And this is the example for a for, uh, for full uh, configuration. So um, the source part is absolutely the same. And the target is only just said, we want to write your data, we want to write our data to a JSON file, and the resource name is output.json. And that's all. And if you want to do it, same in Python, this is the code for it. And we have a third component called manipulations. Uh, so you can change the whole record with these steps. And four different uh, types exist. The first is the modifier. You can modify the whole record. Uh, there is a filter. So you can filter out some records based on some condition. Uh, there is the expand. So uh, when you want to create multiple records from one record, and the aggregator is the first one. Uh, so you can create groups and calculate information. So for example, you can use uh, average function or summarize data or, or something similar. And our next feature was uh, migration and differences. So when you run a MTL script, you can uh, create migration files for each, process, each of their process, uh, each of four jobs. So um, you can define a migration file. And you can use the material differences script to check the differences between 
these files. And it can write you how many new records you have, how many updated records you have, and you can write out these key IDs or anything you want, or you can execute um, some command as well with these parameters. So if you want to mark all of those records which is updated, you can do it easily. So, but let's see uh, some example in real life examples, how you can use this tool. Because basically that was just the beginning and I just want to show you, uh, it's really easy to use and you can do really great things with it. So our first example will be, geolocate given addresses from an Excel file and write the resource into a PostgreSQL database. So for example, it will start with an Excel file. So you have postal code data, city data, street and the street type in your Excel file. So you need to write a configuration file first. So uh, you will set the source is an XLS because you want to read them from an XLS file. Uh, the resource is this addresses.xlsx. You want to skip the first row because it's the header. You're defining the field. So um, there is a postal code which is integer and the map is the zero because it's in the first column and so on. And you need to define two other columns. It will be the latitude and the longitude because you will need this data later on, but you don't, you don't have data at the moment. So you write your own manip manipulations. First of all, defining a filter because you don't need to ge geolocate those records where the street or the city is empty because those records are, are not good. And you need to write your own geocode modifier because it's not a built-in uh, modifier. So we need to write our own uh, geolocation uh, modifier. And we have a target. It will be a database. We defining the connection URL and the table name will be T address. And if the table isn't created, we will create it automatically. So we need to write first our own modifier. It will be a class, inheritance from the modifier. And you only need to define the modify function and we will use for geocode data the PyGeocoder package. Uh, it, it uses uh, Google's Google Maps API. So that's all. We run the geocoder geocode function and we set the latitude and longitude fields value. That's all. And we run the script. So to run the script, only use just Matil minus P because we want to import some other packages with and the directory we actually in and the config.gml, it's our configuration file. And after it's run, the results will be in the database and your fields will be filled out. And it's done. So you only needed to write 20 lines of code to do this. Uh, the second example. Download from Foursquare all venues, JSON files located near to the conference and put all the contact information in a single CSV file. So it's a bit harder, but we need two files at the first. So we need a configuration file which we'll call the Foursquare API. It has an ID and a name, but we need to do uh, to write a modif modifier which will download these files. So we will write on download venue modifier, and that's basically all we need. And the download venue modifier is pretty easy. You just open the file and save it in the source folder, so nothing more. After we run this script, we will have a source folder and we'll have multiple <coughs> JSON files in it. So uh, if we want to put all these informations, which we know about one venue, to put together in one CSV file at the, at the end, we need to write another uh, GML file to configure about how one of these JSON files looks like. So for example, this is the basic information for one file. So we can find the city, the uh, country, the postal code, the address, and the contact phone number, and and et, et. So uh, basically we have this, and we need to define a target, which will be a CSV file, and the resource name will be venues.csv, and we want to open this file every time. And as you see, we didn't uh, set a resource parameter for a source because uh, we will use a Matil work script to iterate over a whole folder and use uh, the given uh, file as a source in every time. So to run this, this is the whole process we need to run. So first, we run the get venues configuration. The next, uh, we will use this Matil work function 
to iterate over the source file. And it will, uh, it will be executed in every file. And after that, if we get the header of the venue's CSV file, it will collect it, all of the information in the source folder's files. It was understandable? OK, and our last example. Uh, get the full product export every day. It's absolutely the same. It's a full package. And you want to update your database on a daily basis. So you need to do it every time. So uh, we have two files, a new .csv and the old .csv. It's absolutely the same in format. So uh, we don't have a header, but the first, uh, first column is the product ID. The second is the product name. And maybe uh, on the fourth column is the price. We only need these. So first of all, we need to write a configuration file, which we load it into a database, because at the moment, we don't have any database to, to, with this data. So we have a CSV file. The delimiter is different. We use the semicolon this time, so we need to define that property. Uh, and the fields, we have a product ID in the first column, and the name in the second column, and the price, yes, in the fourth column. And the target will be a database, and we write this information to a tape product um, table. So OK, if we want to do this migration files I, I mentioned before, so this is the scripts you need to run. So first of all, you need to uh, execute material configuration. But you need to define a minus t operator to generate a migration file. It, this file will contain the status of every record you have and every format. And after that, I just uh, renamed the migration pickle to old migration pickle because I want to uh, run this script again with the new file. And only I need to do is use the minus m operator with the old migration file because that is the current state. So when we run this, we're using the minus m to put the current state, current migration file we have, and using the minus t again to generate a new migration file. And we will use the minus s to defining if we will, uh, want to add the new file now, and previously we added the old file. But that's all. And after that, we can call the material differences function with the uh, migration pickle and the old migration pickle. And it will write us to how many new records we have, how many updated records we have, many, how many uh, unchanged or how many deleted records we have. But the main question is, what happened, really? So uh, we added the new records or not? So basically, uh, it's based on the target types we have. If you're using for a database as a target type, we will be doing some things uh, automatically. For example, if you check the counts of the products, we can see, so we added the new records. And if you want to check, we updated the records we have. Uh, we can see, if you're looking for the same record and the old and the new file, and the only difference is, is the price, and checking the database, what's the price now? We can see, uh, yes, it was updated. So the last question, it was deleted or not? Uh, no, we don't delete automatically. Because you need to define what you want to do with these records. Because basically, sometimes you want to inactivate these records. Sometimes you want to delete these records. But you can use a material difference script to generate uh, all of the product IDs in a single file and execute any kind of SQL you have or, or do anything with that data you want. So these were our examples. So uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, just please let me know. Yes? <laughs> OK. Um, I wanted to know how well does it behave with dirty data, with a lot of errors maybe, or um, I don't know, multiple records for um, primary key uh, uniqueness, uh, you know, uh, duplicate data, yeah. And uh, how does it behave with massive files in input? Does it require to load the uh, whole data in memory? Does it use, or is it, can it process the data asynchronously? Thank you. Uh, OK, um, so it's quite good for dirty data. we basically using Matil uh, as to cleanse data we have. So, um, but it won't fix them. And it won't check you have uh, multiple unique IDs as well. 
So it's a process. We will process it all together. So, yeah, yes, and we won't read the files. So it's really important. So uh, we only read one line. After it's, uh, it's doing the whole migration job, so only one line in the memory. So we don't have all of these informations in our memory, so we can use it for uh, really big files as well. So that's really great. But because of this, we don't know how much unique ID in the record. And if you have uh, multiple unique ID in, in a file and you want to use differences between these files, that will be a problem. But you will see because um, you will get an error message about you have multiple IDs and it's a problematic thing. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't completed my question. It was um, on reporting um, tools. Uh, do I get a um, um, view of what has happened in the detail? How many errors, uh, poorly formatted I know, um, dates uh, with uh, alpha numeric, uh, alpha um, with letters, and then so on? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so if you have a really bad quality data, uh, it won't fix. It will just load it. It's only, uh, only one transformation is uh, doing. So if you put an empty value to material, it will convert it to null. But that's all. So uh, you will use that data you have. So if you want to get rid of some uh, mistaken records or some encoding errors or something, uh, you need to write your own fixes. Other questions? Uh, I have two questions. Okay. One is, can you handle binary data? At the moment, no. Okay. And the other is, how it is? Um, how does it perform? Okay. Uh, in speed, it's quite good. Uh, we did a lot of work, and to it, it's quite good right now. It's not the quickest tool, actually. Uh, if I remember correctly, PTL is quicker. Uh, Luigi is used for absolutely different tasks. So basically, uh, in this general area, I think it's quite good, but not the best. But we're working on the second edition of the METL, and that will be only usable on Python 3, and that will be much quicker. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, uh, good hi. talk, thank you. Um, so, METL is, is just uh, able to do migration or is it able also to do um, data co computation or aggregation or other manipulations in the between migration as well? Uh, you can do um, aggregation or, or any kind of uh, things you want to do with it, but uh, it's not the focus of the material. So, uh, sorry, the focus uh, was on the workflow and the load and, and transform data and not to aggregate them, them or join them. So you can use material to join data to another source file, but basically because we don't know how you want to join your data or how the best way to aggregate your data is the best way to write your own modifiers or aggregators to do that. It's basically usually only one or two line long, so it's not so, uh, not so complex things. But if you do that, that will be much perfect and much quicker. But you can use it to aggregate these things. Um, another question is, um, if you uh, know about or are aware of uh, Blaze and other, the Blaze family tools like Odo, the, the previous Intel one, uh, and how you compare the projects? Uh, to be honest, I haven't used Blaze before, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, time's up. Um, I would like to remind you the um, PyData meeting this evening at a quarter to seven. And now lunchtime. Thank you, Benz. Thank you.